Hello everyone, this is Mark Williams again. This is my second video for today. I decided to start my channel again and I'm going to talk about my Rolling Stones collection. Now, this particular cassette that I'm showing right here, it says um, Piggly Wiggly Store, Kilgore, Texas. July 1966, The Rolling Stones. That's how I actually got into The Rolling Stones. My great-grandmother took, uh, took me to the grocery store and I was about five, I was almost six. And she told me, she said, Mark, you can pick anything out but only one item. So I went to the records place where they have all the the records or they the way it used to be is they'd have a big record rack full of records 45s mostly and I picked out a record called Mother's Little Helper when Mom, Mama Hill came back to where I was she said okay Mark what'd you pick and I said I picked out Mother's Little Helper she said why did you pick that for and I said, because I was told I was Mother's Little Helper. Had no clue as to who the Rolling Stones were at the time, but I do now. To begin with, I'm going to start off with my first Rolling Stones album. Everybody is really familiar with this. I know it's probably backwards. It's called England's Newest Hitmakers, the Rolling Stones. And like I said, it's probably backwards, but I mean, that's just how cameras work. I really love this album. And the main reason I do is because, give you a better shot of it, is because it's basically their re repertoire of blues that they loved. From the Muddy Water stuff to the Jimmy Reed to the um, basically some of their even own material and the Buddy Holly song Not Fade Away the next album is called not a very rare album but it's one of the underrated albums to me it's called The Rolling Stones 12 by 5 I know I can't really get it in here like I want, but in case anybody has, hasn't seen it, this is actually the... Oh, there it is. A better picture of it. Hooray for me. This album is one of my favorite albums. The main reason is because it's got a song that most people aren't familiar with by the Rolling Stones. 2120 South Michigan Avenue, which is basically the address for Chess Records. Yes, the same place that all the famous blues artists, especially the idols of the Rolling Stones like Muddy Waters, he played there. A little Walter. I mean, there's there's hardly anybody that you couldn't name that the Rolling Stones liked it. They still do. I've always liked them, always probably will. The next album I'm going to show for you is called, now that I've got the format ready, it's called Out of Our Heads. It's the one that, uh, you know, everybody's familiar with this. It's got um, a more blues, it's got some of their own material like the last time. Some Otis Redding tracks called That's How Strong My Love Is. Oh, and I really love this. Look at this. That is smashing. That is cool. It's also got my favorite Rolling Stones song on it. It's called One More Try. Most people don't even know what that is, but it's a good album. It's a good song but I don't know anything that they haven't done that was good 
The next song is probably my favorite Rolling Stones album. I'm glad I've got it in my collection. The Rolling Stones Now. And all it is, oh, here it is, just in case no one saw it. What it is, it's basically more of their blue stuff. But mine has a misprint on it. Mine has the Everybody Needs Somebody to Love version that's not supposed to be on this one. I've got a misprint. It's also got a lot of good songs like What a Shame, Little Red Rooster, the blues song. The, um, the song, Oh Baby, We Got a Good Thing Going. And Mona, I Need You Baby. But it's also, on my favorite track on this is called Down Home Girl. It's the blues stuff that they really liked to do. And you know, this was also recorded at Chess Records. Fascinating. The next album that I've got. It's called December's Children. And everybody's. Some more, basically just their own material and, and a few blues songs. But uh, it's mostly known for the uh, Get Off My Cloud and You'd Better Move On and As Tear Goes By, the hit. My five favorite songs on this whole album is She Said Yeah, Talking About You, You Better Move On, The Singer Not The Song, and to me the best song on the whole album, Blue Turns To Gray. The next song, the next song track listing is from you guessed it, Aftermath. It's, I'm sorry, hold on. This is this way in case anybody's never seen the album. It has got a lot of good songs on it. Of course, you know, it's also got Mother's Little Helper, Helper and Lady Jane, and um, Don't You Bother Me. It's the first album where Mick and Keith actually took off as writers, and there's no... Um, there's no covers on this, but that's okay because they were trying to do their own thing. They were doing orig being original. I don't know why people think that they copied. They didn't. They were just being Rolling Stones, doing what they did best. I've also got the American version of Aftermath with the slightly... Um, faded photograph. It's sort of distorted, too. This one, I like this album because it included Paint It Black, but um, I like the English version better. Then, of course, I've also got Flowers. This album's really been talked about, mainly because of, of uh, the thing with Brian's flower not having a petal. But you know something? I don't care what they say about Mr. Jones. I, l I really liked him. A lot of people are probably saying, boo, hiss, Mark Williams stinks because he likes Brian Jones. But hey, that's okay. I'm me. Yes. And that's the most possible, that's the positivist word I know is yes. This album, well, here's the track listing. My, fav my five favorite songs on this, excuse me, are, of course, Ruby Tuesday, Out of Time, Mick does a good version of My Girl, Sitting on a Fence, and Take It or Leave It. That's a good song. I mean, really, they were really doing good. This album, most people don't know because it's rarities, it's just recordings, it's demos, them doing their own thing. It's called Metamorphosis. The standout out tracks on this album, in case you don't know it, because I mean, I don't even know if they still print it. They might. 
is uh, the standout tracks is the demos for Out of Time. I'd much rather be with the boys. Try a little harder. And this is one that's, oh man, this is fascinating. We're wasting time. The next album is called Got Love If You Want It. Actually, this is not a, as bad as an album as most people say. Because it, it is their first live album, but it's actually taken from uh, the studio, just them doing voiceovers over some, most of it. There are some live tracks on this, but it's basically like singing over their own vocals. My th three favorite tracks on this and this is one of those albums not most people like on the Rolling Stones but like I said I don't know anything that I could I, that they could have ever done that I wouldn't like the three favorite songs on this album to me is Lady Jane I've been loving you too long and the live version of the last time I've got Between the Buttons and Between Me and you, you, I actually think that this album is talking about, the title comes from everything you always wanted to know about them, what makes them tick, the kinds of songs, the kinds of personalities that put this whole band as a group together. It's a good album, I think so. But my three favorite songs on this is Yesterday's Paper, Something Happened to Me Yesterday, I'm sorry, it's funny, and um, Who's Been Sleeping Here. This is one of these good albums, and like I said, the Rolling Stones, to me, are a good group. Always will be. My last album I'm going to show is called More Hot Rocks. The main reason to buy this album, besides the hits, it's actually got the songs that are like leftovers from things that were never released, like What to Do that was actually on uh, the British version of Aftermath. It's got um, the first and second version of Poison Ivy. And it's got another version of Everybody Needs Someone to Love. The version that's supposed to be on the Rolling Stones now. The original version. But I've got a substitute on this, remember? For all of you that were, that were listening, I've also got another album. I should have said this, but first, this is one of my favorite albums. Most people already know what this album is. Through the Past Darkly, Big Hits Volume 2, which is actually the second part to this little cassette I've got of Big Hits in Tied. No, I'm sorry. Big hits, high tide, and green grass. Look, Mr. Jones is standing up in front. Like he should have been anyway. Well, anyone, before I go, here's another CD box set that I've got that I don't care. A lot of people don't like this group. But two, three, four, five. Hooray for... The Yardbirds. This is a fabulous group. This is a fabulous box set. It's got everything from 1963 through 1967. And you know something? These guys really play the blues good. Anyway, this is the end of this video, and I hope that nobody cancels 
me because I don't even know if anybody watches them. I just make them because this is my kind of music. Yes, 